Since its release in 2020, I have been a devoted user of my M1 MacBook Air, marvelling at the exceptional power efficiency of Apple Silicon. The display, keyboard and touchpad provide a highly satisfying user experience. However, the device's restriction to a single operating system has occasionally been a source of frustration. Before transitioning to a MacBook, I had been a loyal ThinkPad user for over a decade, and one of their primary attractions was their compatibility with Linux desktops. Naturally, I began to consider installing a Linux distribution on my MacBook Air. My attention was drawn to Asahi Linux, a project that had been in development for some time, but I had not yet had the opportunity to explore thoroughly. This past week, I dedicated many hours to testing Asahi Linux, and I have been extremely impressed with its capabilities. The installation process was both relaxing and nerve-wracking. On the one hand, it was remarkably simple, requiring only the execution of a single command to download and install. On the other hand, it was somewhat daunting to be unable to do anything but observe the progress of the installation. Occasionally the process would stall for several minutes, requiring patience. Despite these concerns, the installation was completed without errors after a longer than expected period, once I had secured a reliable internet connection. I opted for the KDE desktop environment, having used it on my desktop PC for several years. One of my primary concerns when considering Linux for a laptop has always been its potential impact on battery life. Typically, Linux distributions struggle to match or exceed the power management capabilities of proprietary operating systems, and Asahi Linux is no exception. With the screen brightness set to 50%, over 10 tabs open in Firefox, a video playing in the background, several office documents open, and some software installations in progress, the battery of my MacBook Air depleted by approximately 20% after one hour of use. This is slightly more intensive than my typical usage, and the system was utilizing a significant amount of swap due to the limited RAM. I estimate that with lighter usage, such as web browsing, document editing and occasional YouTube viewing, I could achieve six or seven hours of battery life, which is no match of the 10-hour battery life with Mac OS, but still very acceptable. A more concerning issue is the battery drain during sleep. When I closed the lid to put the computer to sleep at 6 p.m. and reopened it the following morning at 9.30 a.m., the battery had dropped from 100% to 72%. This is significantly worse than the exceptional standby battery management of macOS. After installation, I performed a system update and everything appeared to be functioning properly upon reboot. To my surprise, all of the function buttons on the keyboard worked correctly. The only notable omission was the lack of Touch ID functionality on the power button necessitating the input of my password each time I log in. This is a minor inconvenience, however. Audio also worked flawlessly, both through the 3.5mm jack and the speakers. One of my frustrations with macOS is the inability to control the volume of individual applications, but this is easily accomplished in Linux. The desktop utilizes Wayland instead of the more widely used X11, and it has been mostly stable. I have not experienced any crashes, but there is an occasional purple flash that lasts for a split second. While not annoying, I hope this issue will be resolved in future updates. Overall, the system has been very stable during my usage. As a long-time Linux desktop user, this was my first experience with a Fedora distribution. I found it to be not significantly different from other distributions. I was able to install most of the applications I needed using the DNF command, and for others I could use Flatpak. The default installation includes essential applications such as Firefox, LibreOffice, image viewers, and media players. I had some initial concerns about software availability due to the ARM CPU, 
but I have not encountered any major issues. The only application I had to compile myself was the Switch emulator Yuzu, which I will discuss later. Commercial applications are a different story. To my knowledge, there is no ARM version of DaVinci Resolve for Linux, so I would need to find an alternative video editor if I were to fully switch to Asahi Linux. Steam also does not officially support ARM Linux, so I am reliant on emulation for gaming. In terms of performance, Asahi Linux is simply amazing. I often found Mac OS to be somewhat sluggish when launching applications, but in Linux, everything opens instantly. With the latest GPU driver, the desktop also feels very smooth. Compositing works perfectly as well. One concern I had was the lack of hardware video acceleration in browsers, but the CPU is powerful enough to handle 1080p or even 4K playback in Firefox. It is important to note that this is a fanless computer. I am still amazed by the capabilities of Apple Silicon. The primary performance limitation is the lack of RAM. 8 gigabytes in 2024 is simply not sufficient, even for light usage. As mentioned earlier, Steam is not officially supported on Asahi Linux, so I focused on emulation. With OpenGL 4.6 support, I can now run both Switch emulators in Asahi Linux, although I had to compile one of them myself, which was a time-consuming process. Switch emulation is far from perfect. Many games have major rendering issues, such as Fire Emblem, Three Houses, Tears of the Kingdom and Triangle Strategy. However, there are quite a few games that run very well. For example, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown is completely playable. I also tried Fire Emblem, Engage, Metroid Dread and Persona 5, all of which ran fairly well. I expect that most indie or 2D games will be playable in Asahi Linux. I'm hopeful that Vulkan support will be added in the future which would expand the range of playable games. I also tried game streaming with Moonlight and was pleasantly surprised. Due to the lack of hardware video decoding I expected high latency but, as you can see, aside from the unavoidable internet delay, the decoding time is only around 10 milliseconds. Overall, I am very impressed with Asahi Linux. The system is quite stable, with no major software or hardware issues. Battery life is not as exceptional as with Mac OS, but is still solid. Performance is excellent, and things are only expected to improve in the future. The main limitations are the lack of external monitor support via USB-C, the absence of Touch ID, the limited availability of commercial ARM software, and the lack of hardware video encoding and decoding. Depending on your usage patterns, Asahi Linux could be a viable daily driver. I am extremely grateful to the developers who have worked hard to make this possible.